Initializers are special functions inside structs designed to create initial values for all the properties inside the struct. You've already seen how Swift automatically makes an initializer for us based on the properties inside the struct. But we can also make our own custom initializers as long as we follow exactly one rule. You must ensure every property inside your struct has initial value by the time the initializer finishes. Let's start by looking again at Swift's built-in initializer. Here we have a struct called player with a constant called name string and a constant called number int. We can then make an instance of this by saying let player equals player name Megan R number 15. So this makes a new player instance by providing values for those two properties. They appear in the order they were defined in the struct. Swift calls this the memberwise initializer, which is a fancy way of saying it accepts each property in the order it was defined in the, the uh, struct. Now, like I said, this kind of code here is possible because Swift silently generates an initializer for us, accepting those two values. But we could write our own to do exactly the same thing. The only catch here is you must be able to distinguish between the names of parameters coming in and names of properties inside your struct. Here's how it'd look. We would say init name string number int self dot name equals name self dot number equals number. And that works the same as our previous code. It'll be exactly the same to create that thing. However, it's now owned by us. We can add extra things as we need to. We can customize it. But there are a couple of things I want you to think about. In fact, there are three. First up, there is no func keyword. It's not func init. Yes, this looks like a function in terms of its syntax, but Swift treats initializers specially. Second, even though this creates a new player instance, you'll see init does not return anything. There's no explicit return type here. They always return the type of data they belong to. It'll always return a player. And third, I've used self to assign values. To clarify, we mean assign the name parameter to self's name property. And that last point is particularly important because without self, we'd have name equals name. And does, does that mean we're assigning the property to the parameter, the property to the property, parameter to parameter? Who knows, right? By being clear, self.name, we mean the name property that belongs to my current player instance. Set that to be the, the parameter name as opposed to anything else. Now, of course, our custom initializers don't need to work like the memberwise initializer. This one does. We could customize it to do something more interesting. Let's look at that over in Xcode. So we have our, our, our current code. We could say, actually, um, when you make a new player, just give me the name. Don't give me the number. And instead of assigning to uh, the property number, I will use int.random in one through 99. So it's a random number when you make somebody. And now we say, let player equal the player with the name of Megan R and then print player.number. We'll get her number is now 87, turns out. Just remember the golden rule here. By the time your initializer finishes, all properties must have a value. That's it. If we had not provided one here, like we're giving name a property but not, not number, Swift would be very upset indeed. Bang! You're trying to finish initializer without initializing all stored properties. It will not build our code. Now, although you can call other methods from inside your initializer, you can only do so once you've fulfilled the requirement of having values for all your stored properties. Swift isn't able to run other methods safely knowing that things are insecure. So you've got to give everything a default value first, and then you can run all the methods you want to. But you can't run a method first because it might try and use a value that hasn't got the initial value yet, so it could cause all kinds of problems. Don't do that. <laughs> Swift won't even let you do it, it'll complain. You can, if you want to, assign multiple initializers to your structs. You know, you could have 
uh, name and number, and then just name and then something else or position, who knows what. Multiple if you want to, as long as they all follow the single, the only one golden rule. Plus you can use uh, things like external parameter names. You can have default values and more. However, this is important. As soon as you have your own custom initializer, even just one, you will lose access to Swift's automatically generated member-wise initializer. So the built-in one will go away. You've got to use your custom one instead, unless you take custom steps to retain it, which we'll look at later on. This is not an accident. Swift effectively assumes because you have some special way to initialize your struct, the default one should, it could be considered unsafe and not be made available. Should you use your custom logic instead.